Ta-da! We are at Big Bend National Park, which we understand is one of the least visited parks in the United States, and that's probably because of how remote it is in the southern part of Texas. The good thing about being so remote is that this is one of the uh, few that is designated as the dark sky national park. Yeah, so that means that there is no light pollution in Big Bend. There's very, very little. We've noticed that you can even see the band of the Milky Way in the night sky, which is really cool and we're looking forward to it. So the plan is we're gonna spend a week here at the National Park and we're gonna be camping out in three different campsites. But we just know that we've stocked up our provisions to make sure that we have enough food for a week. Yep, so what do you think? Let's hit ready into to go? Yeah, let's hit into the park. Okay. Do you need this? Okay, thank you very much. Have a good day. We are officially inside the Big Bend National Park. And that National Parks Pass that we bought for $80 covered $30 of this trip. Yeah. Today, we're going to start our Big Bend tour at the Chisos Mountain region, one of the National Park's most popular areas. Chisos Mountain is, as the name implies, located up high atop the rest of the desert of Big Bend. They said not recommended for RVs over 24 feet. And we're 24 and a half feet, so we're just there. <gasps> we're over to recommendation. Know. Yeah, uh, we're good. I'm an excellent driver. Mm. Excellent driver. The drive up to Chisos Mountain requires extreme caution. Windy, narrow roads, along with some ice remnants on the ground, make it require a little bit more attention, especially when you're driving an oversized camper van like ours. Big Bend National Park is pretty huge. It's not one of the biggest ones, but it's definitely a big park. Because of that, they have divided up into sort of regions, and each region has their own visitor center slash store. We're at the Chisos Basin Visitor Center, and this is the place you come when you want access to internet. The thing is, you have to be really close to the building, but it is fast. And also right behind me, there is a small grocery store, so if you need bread, trail mix, things like that, and drinks, you can get it all there. Not a lot of selection, but it's the stuff you need. It's a road runner. Yeah, he's just trying to get warm. Yep, it's not scare of anybody. Super duper cool. <laughs> it's a good day already. It's a great place to get ready for a serious hike, or just a short one. Black bear and mountain lion two animals that you don't expect to find here in Big Bend National Park. However, Chisos Mountain has these two animals. They just migrated from Mexico from what I learned. I'm hopeful to see them somehow. <laughs> Maybe not too close, but I would love to see them here. In Big Bend National Park and in most national parks, you're not allowed to take pets on the trails. But the good news is, in Big Bend, you can take a dog anywhere cars can go. So we're actually gonna do a loop here, go up and see some of the nice cottages here at Big Bend. Who knew that Big Bend had a lodge hotel, as well as some private cottages for rent? Prickly pear fruit. Those things are delicious. I bought a bag of them once. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And they're, they're absolutely delicious. We just got to Chisos Basin, and it looks like a beautiful campground, and this is where we're gonna be spending a couple nights. Such a cutthroat place to get a campground, and we managed last minute to get this reserved for us tonight. This is where we're gonna spend the night tonight, overlooking the Emory Peak. Oh, hello. What a great welcoming team. As soon as we pull in, a road driver just say hi. It said that it's rarely rain in Big Bend, let alone snow but it did just snow last week and we still have some ice on the ground. The sun is nice and warm, but the wind is definitely chilly. You can use generators from eight to 11 and five to eight. Uh, we get a grill, which is nice. Picnic table with bench. And look at this guys. This is bear in Javelina country. Bear proof. The storage of food. What an epic sight, isn't it? Just just beautiful. So cool. Come here, Connor. We're not done yet. Somebody thinks she's getting some burgers. <laughs> Set puppy eyes. Are you hungry? <laughs> no. <laughs> that poor dog. She can have a hot dog. We'll put a hot dog in her meal. Don't tell the Humane Society. 
it is cold, so I'm going to go inside. It is freezing out this morning. Someone who'll do whatever it takes for coffee. These desperate people. <laughs> Generator's not allowed before eight, so... Uh, coffee time. <laughs> Took the coffee machine to the bathroom to hook it up. <laughs> bathroom coffee, classier bathroom coffee. So we tried an experiment last night to see how we'd do if we didn't turn the heat on at all. <laughs> we woke up this morning and it was 36 degrees in the van, so this is good to warm my body. And I don't think we're gonna do that anymore. Just gonna enjoy coffee outside. Didn't expect that. The ice. Last night we got a wet towel and we hang it outside. <sighs> Frozen. Solid. I guess we didn't need the clip to strap it on last <laughs> night, did we? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh lord. It's like it was built for the mirror. Hitting of South Texas is hot and steamy and desert. It's cold. <laughs> it went down to about 25 degrees or maybe minus five, something like that. So yeah, didn't expect that at all. But it is worth it. That's why we love national parks. So look at the view. Can't imagine sleeping in the tent. It's probably freezing. A good thing about campgrounds here is that they have RV dumping station and we definitely gonna take advantage of it. What a majestic view for RV dump station. <laughs> oh man. Frozen slushy poop. Oh. I think our gray tank might be frozen, so I might want to go boil some water and throw it down the everything will help? I hope so. I had a boiling water. I hope not gonna crack the pipe. Oh man, it's not working. Guess we'll wait until later. There's a gas station inside the Big Bend National Park. I've never seen any gas station inside the national parks before, but this is definitely a necessity for the national park. How much is it, Michael? Two ninety one. Ouch. Yep. We're used to paying two oh nine to two nineteen, so. Ooh -wee. I guess you're getting the park surcharge. Yes. Or the 100 miles away from other gas surcharge. Well, not many options available here. Other than the official campgrounds here at the Big Bend National Park, you can also request a backpacking permit, which gives you permission to camp out in the wilderness. And this is one of the sites. This is the Henold Draw campsite, and it is accessible by car. So you want to pitch a tent or an RV. This is one of the places that you can camp overnight here at the park. The big disadvantage of this place is that there's no shade whatsoever. If you have solar panels, it's perfect. Javelinas. <laughs> oh look, the Javelina family. Oh. There's 13 of them, I think. There's a little baby up there too. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that is so neat. We've seen one or two Javelinas, but not a group that big. No, and they just chill. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Castellon Visitor Center. It's about 22 miles drive from the closest entrance, but this is not too far from the Mexico border. It was 74 degrees in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you almost want to set up camp in there. <laughs> wild horses. You think they're wild? Oh yeah, they're definitely wild. We are so close to Mexico. Rio Grande is next to us here. And we'll be able to see Mexico again today. That is Mexico. Big, beautiful wall between US and Mexico. planning on hiking the Santa Elena Canyon Trail, a must-see in Big Bend. Unfortunately, dogs aren't allowed on the trail, so we had to go solo on this journey without Kana. 
with a cloudy, cool day like this, the hike is still enjoyable. Not today, it's barely above freezing. Walking down to the Rio Grande. Look at that, it's so incredible. United States, Rio Grande, Mexico. Remember in Peru when we used to say that if we were in the United States, all these trails would be protected by guardrails? <laughs> For safety reasons? Not here in Big Bend. Slip and fall, you're in trouble. So incredible, holy crap. The camera doesn't do it justice. The Rio Grande has an optical illusion. Seems like it's just going upward, but I'm not sure that's actually the case. Too bad it's a cloudy day. If it's like a blue sky and completely sunny, it's probably gonna be very hot and it's gonna be very pretty. That's why we love national parks, especially here in the West. You feel so small and meaningless in the middle of this majestic, majestic structures. Look at that, that's crazy. Sometimes when you're really quiet here in the canyon, you can just hear yourself echoing. I can't even describe it. Woo! You know what they said about one sound that can't really echo? A duck quack. Is that right? That's a scary reminder of things that can happen in a canyon. That's a big rock that tumbled off something here. <laughs> Wow. I love a loop. Maybe I shouldn't be screaming around for the echo. Otherwise you're gonna witness something really, really bad. This is the end of the trail. This is actually ends at the Rio Grande and the water is so clear and looks very, very shallow. So you can actually walk across, which is illegal, touch Mexico and come back. Obviously, I'm not going to do that, so that's for the record, but you can definitely see Mexico just right there. This is the Sotol Vista. We were just there this morning, but look at the view. Not a bad view at all. Not a bad day. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> like that. From here, we continue on eastward to another region of Big Bend, Rio Grande Village. As always, it's such a scenic drive through the desert landscape and along the Rio Grande River. I'm sure this trail is not an official national park trail. No. Most likely built by the people from the other side to get up here. This is about as close as you get to another country without actually being allowed to go in. Oh man, I wish we could. Hola amigos. So close, but yet so far. I'd love to go over to someone would feed me. I'm not even that hungry, but I would love some tamales right now. Yeah, that would be good. Like made by someone who knows how to make them. You can throw a rock to Mexico. I think I can actually reach it this time. Right, <laughs> <of> the border <laughs> agent. <laughs> it got warm pretty quick, didn't it? Yes. You think it's in the 80s yet? Oh, no, no. Definitely. What's that? Oh, hi there, buddy. Beep, beep. Looking for handouts. No, we don't have anything to feed you. Sorry. When you're on the high wind road, and it goes beep, beep. Beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> The joy of camping. Coffee! Well, the only downside of our experience here in the Rio Grande Village campground is that we only find a spot in the no generator zone. Therefore, we can't really use our generator in the morning. For the coffee, we have to rely on the only outlet source here in our area, which is in the bathroom. That's what I'm doing now, just making coffee in the bathroom. <laughs> Things like that might happen. Ready for coffee? We need some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> this is almost nine o'clock and this is probably the latest we ever slept in. Yes, definitely good to sleep in. This was supposed to be breakfast, but since it's after 10 in the morning, we're gonna kind of call it brunch. 
That was the worst bacon ever. I didn't see that part. <laughs> Irregular slices. <laughs> Value bacon. That's why it was $1.99. Mmm, bacon crumbles. Yeah, that's what it's probably gonna be. <laughs> Here's our irregularly sliced value bacon. I'll take it. Cheesy eggs. Cheesy egg. Don't you love traveling with chef? I do. You see how obsessed we are with all the hot sauce and salsa? Yep. We love condiments. Oh, 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 you want it? You want that? You want that? You want that? Oh, oh, oh. Everybody's having breakfast now. Everybody's happy. La Botanera. It's my latest favorite hot sauce. Oh yeah. That's a huge crow. It might be a raven. Not too far from our campground is the Rio Grande Village Visitor Center. It offers plenty of opportunities to see wildlife. Okay. We have a big javelina. This one here has a nice little store in Rio Grande Village uh, that also has a laundry and Wi-Fi. So this is the place you come when you want to catch up. And it also has propane and gasoline too. Diesel is pretty expensive here. <laughs> Rio Grande Village store has the basic necessities you need for camping, including cold drinks, an ATM, and of course, Wi-Fi. They have a laundry service. Granted, it's not like a laundromat or anything, but they have washing machine and a dryer. That's all you need. So laundry day today. doing today? Pretty good, you? Good, good, thank you. We're in, in Boquillas Canyon overlook now. This is so weird though. It's one day you could be like 40 degrees and then the next day, like today, right now it's 73 degrees yep. and we're in shorts and a t-shirt. Yep. Village behind us is called Boquillas del Carmen. That is Mexico. Boquillas del Carmen is very largely reliant upon the people on this side of the Rio Grande for a lot of their income. And of course now because of COVID, all that is shut down. You cannot go across. It used to be that you could just take a boat and go right across the river, buy some food, some tacos or tamales and, and things like that. And gifts. And yeah. gifts. And because it's had such a bad effect on the village across the river, they've let them bring things over here. And this is some crafts that are done by the people of Boquilla del Carmen. There's a milk jug you can put your money in if you want to buy something. And that money, I'm not sure how they have it arranged to get picked up and brought over. But it's got to be nowhere near the revenue that they were getting before. What do you want to buy? Let's see what they have. Walking sticks, ten dollars. Everything is ten dollars. Oh, that's a road runner. I like the scorpion the best. Except we have nowhere to put this kind of stuff. No, unfortunately not. There was a border guard just here a minute ago who left pretty quickly when he saw something across the river. We have no idea what it was. I looked over across and said, "Here come the goats," because they were bringing goats to the river. And he said, "It's more than just goats," and he got in his truck and took off. <laughs> yeah, pretty quickly. Federales. Federales. He said, "If he pushes back on them, the Federales will get them." Get the Mexican army. Mexican federal police. It's like the FBI of Mexico. From what we understand, the officer's job is to keep an eye out for any possible illegal crossings from Mexico. And sure enough. This rider crossed the Rio Grande on his horse. After getting instructions from the U.S. Border Patrol and the Mexican Federalists across the river, the horse rider voluntarily goes back to Mexico. I guess he went back. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm pretty convinced that is the tunnel that a roadrunner drew to avoid the coyote. That was probably the only funny thing you've said in this whole trip. Your Grande Village is the largest campground here in Big Bend National Park. Unfortunately, for the three days we camping out here, we had to pick all different sites. That's how popular it is. So we just picked the first available one. 
And tonight we are in camp number 28. This is probably the most secluded site here in the campground. Privacy is the selling point here in camp number 28. Sheriff Michelle, I am making a brown sauce. It's more fun to cook outside than it is inside the van. And it smells good. Not even done yet with any sauce. It just smells good. Yep. Pork short ribs that I cut up. Oh man, it smells good. Looking good, Michael. So since we can't use the generator, we have to heat up the rice in the conventional way, which is stove. Done. We done. Ho ho ho. What you drinking? I am drinking a Santa Fe Brewing Company 7K IPA. I had one of these last night and I had to go back for more today. Which is kind of good because it'll get us into the spirit. We are done with Big Ben after night and we are heading to New Mexico. And if this is any indication of what we're expecting when it comes to beer there, I'll stay in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, that's our long journey in Texas. Yeah, we're heading out tomorrow to New Mexico. Yeah, it's just uh, about maybe five hour drive completely almost straight north to Carlsbad, New Mexico, yeah. which is going to be the first state in two months. Land of Dang. enchantment. Yeah, so, you know, hope you really like our Texas journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to our channel and follow our journeys all across the United States and Canada and maybe Mexico, please click the subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications every time we post something new, Please ring the bell. <laughs> Gracias, Texas. Thank you, Texas. Thank you for watching. Remember the Alamo. <laughs> I don't know. Just remember the Alamo. <laughs>